All right, guys, welcome back. Let me keep this one quick because, you know, we all got stuff to do. These are the three things that I've done to mitigate my worm casting situation. If you're struggling with this, first of all, my condolences. Now, worm castings, if you didn't know, it is essentially just worms pooping all over your lawn. I know, it's ridiculous. And for us in the low cut society who are cutting at one inch or below, this is a really big nuisance in the fall and spring. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is raise your height of cut. I know, it hurts me too. That's the last thing I wanted to do, but hear me out on this. The worm castings themselves are thick, they're viscous. And when we're cutting below one inch, these mounds, I mean, these mounds, some of them are two inches high. And when they're two inches high and you roll over that mound, with your real mower, you're smearing the crown of your plant. And once you smear the crown of your plant, your plant cannot properly synthesize and continue to grow, therefore it dies. And this could be really detrimental if you don't have any self-repairing abilities in your lawn, meaning you have a three-way blend of perennial rye, which only tillers out and it doesn't spread by any rhizomes or stolons. So this is especially dangerous for a lawn like that. So right now, I've gone from cutting at four tenths of an inch to now I'm up to three quarters of an inch. And I'm holding fast there. That seems to be an okay height. So as long as I do the next step, which is stop mowing my grass while it is wet. Now, ideally the Hudson doesn't mind at all when the grass is a little damp, but when the castings have not dried out yet, what happens? They're smearing the, over the crown of that plant. So in combination of raising your height of cut and not mowing while it's wet, allowing those castings to dry out, you are now mitigating the detrimental aspect of the worm castings, which is creating these dollops throughout your lawn and they start to look like kind of leopard spots. So you combine those two things with this last tip, which is knocking the mounds down once they've dried out now there's a few different techniques i've tried i have tried the broom method push broom workshop broom i found that that was a bit aggressive on the grass and i really just didn't care for the results that i was getting using a push broom i even tried a leveling rank and i didn't really like what i was getting there either so there's two different techniques that I've found that I like the best. They are time consuming, but I imagine if you're real mowing and you wanna get back down to a half an inch or lower, it's gonna be worth your while. So the first tip I'll give you is just get you a wire rake. Get you a wire yard rake, flip that thing upside down and literally just run it back and forth over those castings, knocking the mounds down. They almost look like ant hills once they've dried out, but the consistency is very different. They should crumble in your hand. Once they crumble in your hand, you know you're good to go. The other thing that I found is also an outside broom, but it's not a workshop broom. It's like a broom that you would have in the house. And I take this more so commercial workshop type sweeping broom that's good for outdoors, and I sweep them out. I found that to be a lot less aggressive than using a push broom. Now, you could use a drag mat, but I think a drag mat would be a little bit aggressive to the lawn as well. I don't have a drag mat to test that technique out, but let me know down below if you've had success using a drag mat. Now, as far as getting rid of the worms, most things that used to get rid of worms for five to six years that they use on golf courses, those things are illegal, even in America. And outside of that, I wouldn't necessarily promote to you to want to get rid of the worms. The worms being present is good. It shows that you have a good ecosystem, really prevalent in clay type soils. It's not necessarily a bad thing. So these are just ways of mitigating and learning how to work with nature rather than against it. But if you're really bent on trying to suppress them eating further, you can try these things out, which I gave a shot at least the legal one, that I could give a shot here in Germany. I did read some articles where there were some studies where they were using fungicides 
that seem to mitigate the activity of the worms and them coming up and dropping their castings on top of the soil. If I can find those, I'll drop links for those studies down below. Now, the other thing that I was reading was, you know, worms don't really like acidic soil. So I thought that I could maybe use some acidic base products that I already had on hand and acidify the top layer of my soil and that would mitigate the worms activities. That didn't really work either. I combined soil hume from Simple Lawn Solutions with this neutralized product from Ecologel, which is 26% sulfur. I dropped that down on the lawn, watered it in, and let me tell you what happened. The lawn looked freaking amazing. But because of the constant moisture and the cooler temps, well, the worms still do what they do, which is come up in the middle of the night, poop, get them a nice breath of fresh air, and then retreat back down before the sun comes out and dries them out. These are the three steps I found to work. Raise your height of cut, don't mow when it's wet, break down those mounds once they dry out, and we can at least hold off the worms until the weather dries up a bit and it's not so saturated and they stay their behinds in the ground where they belong. That's it. Promised it would be a short one. Pretty much wraps this up. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.